Hey guys, what's up? For today's video, I thought about this crazy idea on how my books will look like or how would they be if they were RPGs or just video games in general. I know I was just, you know, yeah, I don't do drugs or, you know, I barely drink, don't think wrong of me, but I was just like maybe hallucinating on how my books will be if they were RPGs. And of course, this is a marketing strategy to promote my books to you. So link to my books in the description, of course. Now, I'm only going to talk about my books in English, because I think it would be a little bit unfair to talk about my books in Spanish, and then people who don't speak Spanish or can't understand or read Spanish are going to be like, ah, oh, that book sounded so cool, I want to read it, but it's only in Spanish. Ah, fuck you, Eric Landon. You see, I thought about that, so don't worry. I'm only covering my books in English, which, which are four so far. Awesome, right? Yeah, right. Anyway, I guess I'll start with my first book, Terra Gaiden, which was published June 14, well, June 15, as a matter of fact, 2014. Wow, it's been over five years since I wrote and published that book. Anyway, Terra Gaiden. What's it about? Well, it's about this empire, it's a fictional universe, of course, a fantasy medieval uh, book. And it's about this empire who wants to, that wants to, you know, uh, colonize weaker nations and become stronger. But as usual, they're doing the classic, the end justifies their means. Uh, so they're killing a lot of innocent people and they're causing a lot of strife and war and whatnot. So, uh, all of a sudden, this captain, this captain from, uh, from one of the armies, from a kingdom who is being oppressed by this empire, decides to start a revolution alongside a priest who was previously a military strategist. So they have the brains and the manpower, but they lack the leadership because every attempt they have tried before has failed. They need a true leader. So these guys hire the legendary mercenary Lauren Silverain who is the protagonist of this book. Lauren is a fantastic mercenary, a kick ass, and she has her own little band of mercenaries, and she has made a name for herself and her group. So they hire this mercenary to lead the Libera Liberation Army. Liberation Army, that sounds like sweet, couldn't. Yeah, Liberation Army against this, not exactly evil empire, but sketchy empire with a lot of dark secrets. And then all of a sudden we realize that Lauren has these ties with this obnoxious and strange character, dark, gothic character named Cassandra, and it's, it becomes suddenly a turn, crazy turn of events that involves necromancy. That's all I'm gonna say. So obviously this book was heavily influenced by games like Suikoden, franchises like Suikoden or Fire Emblem, more so than Fire Emblem because there's a lot of war battles, and a lot of, you know, strategy involved, and a lot of, you know, characters. I know that also sounds like Suikoden, but trust me, if you read this book, or if you read it one day, you're gonna notice it's more oriented towards Fire Emblem. Therefore, Terra Gaiden could never work as anything else other than a strategy RPG. I mean, that'll be awesome. Just, just imagine, if you've read this book, imagine this book and these characters moving them around in, in grid, in squares, Oh man, I want to see that happen so bad, but I'm not rich, I'm not a game developer, and to develop a strategy RPG, I know some fr have my, my one of my best friends is a game developer, and he's told me that to create a strategy RPG, it's really hard because it involves a lot of statues, a lot of mathematics, a lot of... Uh, a lot of stuff, you know, you gotta be almost genius to create these games. Strategy RPGs, especially if they're grid-based, like Fire Emblem. Wow, but Terra Gaiden? I can dream, right? You know, as a strategy RPG, a la Fire Emblem. Ah, that'll be just amazing. That's their guide for you. It will only work as a strategy RPG, a la Fire Emblem. I mean, the closer it resembles a Fire Emblem, oh, then people will start calling it a Fire Emblem clone. Hey, what the hell? There are a lot of Tactics Ogre and Final Fantasy Tactics clones, and they're fine. People love them. I don't care if it's a Fire Emblem clone. Terra Gaiden. Next book. Next book I wrote in English, well, there's this one that came before. It was published in 2015, 
July 4, 2015. No, it has nothing to do with the Independence Day in the USA. Nothing which is a coincidence. July 4, 2015. It's called Seven Shadows, but that back then I published this book in, in Spanish. So, I translated this book in English in early January 2017. So I guess the, I should save this book for last. Anyway, you know, it's in English and that's what matters. Seven Shadows, however, is a short story about Alice, a girl who is on her late 20s and he's kind of... well, she's just kind of fucked up and she starts a quest because she has nothing better to do with her life because she's miserable, she's sad, she's depressed and she's also really angry because she blames all, all of her problems in the people that ruin her life. So there's seven people, Alice's shadows, uh, as she calls them, that need to die in order for her to be released of this pain. So she starts a quest on trying to find these seven people from her past and kill them. However, um, yes, there's action involved, but barely any. It's more of a drama book. It's more of a psychological drama book about revenge, and it's told through two points of views, uh, her point of view, when it turns into first-person narration, and then my point of view, who I'm just, you know, the neutral writer telling her story and describing her actions. And, you know, little by little, this is why this book is, is important. It's a short story, 110 pages. Uh, it got mixed reviews, precisely because a lot of people don't understand this book. They hate, automatically, they hate this character, most people, because they don't, they don't want to put themselves in her shoes. And that's what really matters. You can't put yourself in her shoes because she's a, a murderer. She's a psychopath. In any case, whether you guys relate to this character or not, in order to understand this character and this story, this hate, hateable character and hateful story and character, you need to read the book through the end and have an open mind. However, how will this work as a video game? Could this work as an RPG? Now I thought about it and... Nope. I don't think Seven Shadows could ever work as an RPG because there's barely any action. You have to feel this, I don't know, maybe it could be an action RPG, hack and slash, you know, that, that big sword first. Maybe it could be an action RPG of some sort, sure, but who will she be fighting against? There's just seven people and most of them don't even fight. They're not warriors or trained sword women or sword men like her. This could only work, I believe, as a visual novel. It would be a great visual novel. You know, I could expand the story and tell more. It would be a great visual novel for the PS Vita or the PS4. That's how, that's the only way I can think of this book could work as a video game. So no RPG for Seven Shadows? That's a bummer. But anyway, it can still be turned into a video game. Well, visual novel. Next book. Next book is The Shattered Sky. Shattered Sky is a book that I originally wrote in English. It only exists in English. It's a very short story, about 50 pages long, and I published this book for free. You can download this book on a PDF format for free. I'll leave the link in the description below. There's also a blog. If you don't want to download anything, just want to read the book, it's there posted on a blog. You can read it for free anytime. Absolutely free! That's right. It's a short story. I don't know if you guys saw, watched this anime called uh, Gant. Gant, the classic anime. It's really violent, you know. Well, I take, I didn't exactly take that idea in specific, but I took the classic idea of group of people trapped in a place. In this case, in my book's case, a uh, deserted big city. And not a destroyed post-apocalyptic city. No, it's just a city. Some parts are destroyed. Some parts are just left intact. And there's a lot of mystery surrounding this city, this city because people uh, in this book start thinking that it's just a game, that they were thrown in into this cynical, horrible, sinister game made by some really fucked up, crazy ass guy. That's what the characters think. And it's just a game. Because these screens start popping up and telling them that if they kill one person, they're free to go home. They return to their world. So imagine the kind of characters here that here are. So. Some of these characters are trained people, they're warriors, they can fight, while some others don't. But there's also creatures, these ghost creatures, they're, you know, they seem to be connected with the main character, Giselle, this woman here, you see him right now. 
but I, this is just a representation of my character. I don't, I don't know who the hell draw or, or made this art. I have no idea who made this character. I just, I'm just using it to represent my character. Anyway, Giselle, she's a kick-ass swordswoman. That's right. And there's also other characters that can fight. In conclusion, there's three main characters who can fight, and in the end, you know, they start fighting against each other. That's all I'm gonna say. Let's just put that, thanks to the ghosts and these creatures that appear, that start bugging people and probably harassing people and killing people in case they don't want to kill somebody else, they don't want to follow the rules, then, you know what happens? They become enemies. Which means, I think the Shatter Sky could perfectly work as an action RPG. You know, you will start this game from the beginning and then let it, the game will let you choose between these three main characters or maybe choose Giselle first and then you unlock the second character, something like that. And then you can you can experience the story through this character's point of view. Because there's, there's this shadowy creature called Mordol who nobody can explain why he became such a horrid creature, this shadowish, big cloth creature. And there's this other girl called Grace, and she's a total psycho bitch, and she just wants to... She doesn't give a shit. She, she can easily kill anybody who comes across her path. She doesn't give a fuck, but she, you know what? She doesn't want to go home. She just wants to kill, so imagine. And then Giselle is like a little bit more of a kick-ass, uh, serious uh, heroine, and she's been there for a while now in this, in this game. So... This could only work as a hack and slash action RPG. It will be great, you know, just playing as Giselle through all these stages. It will be a short game. I don't think it will be one of those 40 hours plus RPGs. But hey, you can unlock different characters and play it as them. Now, I don't know, maybe 10 to 15 hours each character. That will be great. I think the Shatter Sky will perfectly work as an action RPG with a bigger script, a bigger story. I always regret how my book turned out to be only a short story of 50 pages long, but it was free. I was like, oh, I'm just gonna give it for free. So people can read it for free anytime. Someday I'll come back to that book and not rewrite it, just expand it into a novel and add more characters and more drama and more mysteries and more action RPG elements. My final book, The Reaper Thorn, of course. My masterpiece, I love this book. I'm always bragging about this book. Anyway, The Reaper's Thorn. It tells the story of Darius Thorn, this guy as you see here. Darius Thorn, he's um, a bounty hunter uh, living in the 19th century, you know, the Gothic century, the Victorian era in, in Europe. I love that. The Reaper's Thorn. The Nottingham Church, Nottingham is a small city in, in the UK where I lived for five months. And obviously I got the inspiration to write this book. And he gets hired by the Nottingham Church, Christian Church, to hunt, hunt down this creature that's sort of like a wraith or like a ghost. Nobody knows. You know, one of those hooded creatures that's just full of darkness that resemble the Green Reaper but without the skeleton. Those are wraiths. And they hire this guy to hunt this creature, to hunt it down, because apparently there's been a lot of horrible murders all around the city, horrible, atrocious murders, and they hire this guy to hunt down this creature. But there's a catch. It turns out that this guy has a personal connection to this wraith, and he's been chasing this monster for years, and he's becoming obsessed. The more you advance through this book, you realize how much his obsession and his personal vendetta is driving him crazy. And along the way, he gets to visit uh, several decent places in Europe, like Berlin, for example, uh, like London, and even in Mexico. There's a part, a big part of the book that takes place in Guadalajara, my city where I was born and lived almost my whole life in Mexico. So he meets other characters and there's other characters involved, but most of the time this guy is alone. So this gothic novel, if it were ever be turned into an RPG, I think it'll be something like like these two games, Bloodborne and Vampire. Vampire is more niche game, you guys probably don't know this game. I might stream this game on YouTube soon, so you can have a look at it, it's great. And Bloodborne. So yeah, The Reaper of Thorn maybe could only work as an action RPG, maybe also as a visual novel, but I think it'll be, I don't know, pretty boring. I mean, if you're gonna... a story like this... I would rather have it as a book than a visual novel, but as a video game, it can work as no nothing else than an action RPG. 
you know, imagine just the streets of this gothic environment in this game, these, these dark and twisted beings there, because he does get to fight some beings, that's all I'll say. And it's just bloody and gorish and brutal, just like my book. And vampires, all about the 19th century and London in England. Ah, you know, it's just... These are two perfect examples how the Reaper's Thorn will turn out to be as a video game, especially as an action RPG. You just go in there, through this entire book, level up, and also, there's other two characters, two co-protagonists, well, one of these is the other main character, but she's kind of a spoiler, her name is Charlotte, and her part, her story arc takes place in the 15th, no, in the 14th century, and there's also some fighting involved, some adventure involved, so you can just play as Darius and then switch to this character, Charlotte, and then maybe you, after you finish the game you unlock this third character, Natasha, and see the story through her point of view. I don't know, add some, some, some add story, some, some, some story arcs, some more story arcs, other than Darius' story. That would be great. The Reaper's Thorn could be a great gothic action RPG. I'm pretty damn sure of that. And anyways, guys, that's my take on my own books in English on how they will be RPGs. If they were RPGs, how would they be like? It's a great idea, my thought for this video, in order to promote my books. Uh, will this ever happen? Can my books be ever turned into RPGs? I don't know, probably maybe only Terra Gaiden? Let's start with that. I'm dying to play a Fire Emblem version. Wait, Fire Emblem hack. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. Links to my books in the description below. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.